Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I'm going to say our customary blessing. Blessed art thou, Adonai Eloheinu, King Universe, who says, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to reverse ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Eloheinu, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and the mouths of all your people Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel. May we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai Eloheinu, King of the Universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah of truth. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to enlighten you. May he be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today is the first reading of Bo, as it is the first day of the week. Exodus 10, 1 through 13, 16. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, that I may show these signs of mine among them, and that you may tell in the hearing of your son and in, of your grandson how I have dealt harshly with the Egyptians. And what signs I have done among them, that you may know that I am Yahweh. So Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh and said to him, Thus says Yahweh, the Elohim of the Hebrews, How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go, that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow I will bring locusts into your country. And they shall cover the face of the land, so that no one can see the land. And they shall eat what is left to you after the hail. And they shall eat every tree of yours that grows in the field. And they shall fill your houses and the houses of your servants and all of the Egyptians. As neither your fathers nor your grandfathers have seen. From the day they come on the earth to this day. Then he turned and went out from Pharaoh. The Pharaoh's servant said to him, How long shall this man be a snare to us? Let the men go that they may serve Yahweh their Elohim. Do not... Do not yet understand that Egypt is ruined. So Moses and Aaron were brought back to Pharaoh, and he said to them, Go serve Yahweh your Elohim. But which ones are to go? Moses said, We will go with our young and our old. We will go with our sons and our daughters and with the flocks and herds, for we must hold a feast to Yahweh. Then he said to them, Yahweh will be with you. If I ever let you and your little ones go, look, you have some evil purpose in mind. No, go the men among you and serve Yahweh, for that is what you were asking. And they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, so that they may come upon the land of Egypt and eat every plant of the land, all that the hail, all that the hail has left. So Moses stretched out his staff over the land of Egypt, and Yahweh brought an east wind among the land all that day and all that night, when it was morning, the east wind had brought the locusts. The locusts came up over all the land of Egypt and settled on the whole country of Egypt. Such a dense swarm of locusts that it had never been seen before, nor will ever be seen again. They covered the face of the whole land so that the land was darkened, and they ate the pl all the plants of the land and all the fruits of the trees the hail had left. Not a green thing remained, neither tree nor plant of field through all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh hastily called Moses and Aaron and said, I have sinned against Yahweh your Elohim and against you. Now therefore forgive my sin, please only this once, and plead with Yahweh your Elohim only to remove this death from me. So he went out from Pharaoh and pleaded with Yahweh, and Yahweh turned the wind into a west strong, into a very strong west wind, which lifted the locusts and drove them into the Red Sea. Not a single locust was left in all the country of Egypt. But Yahweh hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the people of Israel go. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, a darkness to be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven, and there was a pitch of darkness in all the land of Egypt. Three days they did not see another, one another, nor did they rise from his place for three days. But all the people of Israel had light where they lived. Then Pharaoh called Moses and said, Go serve Yahweh, your little ones also may go with you, only let your fox and your, your flocks and your herds remain. 
But Moses said, You must also let us have sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice to Yahweh Elohim. Our livestock must go with us. Not a hoof shall be left behind, for we must take them to serve Yahweh Elohim. And we do not know with what we must serve Yahweh until we arrive there. But Yahweh hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. Then Pharaoh said to him, Get away from me, take and care never to see my face again, for on the day you see my face you shall die. Moses said, As you say, I will not see your face again. Yahweh said to Moses, Yet one plague more I will bring upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterward he will let you go from here. When he lets you go, he will drive you away completely. Speak now, in the hearing of the people, that they may ask every man of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor for silver and gold jewelry. And Yahweh gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. So Moses said, Thus says Yahweh, About midnight I will go out in the midst of Egypt, and every firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne, even to the firstborn of the slave girl who is behind the handmill, and all the firstborn of the cattle, there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there has never been before, nor ever will be again. But not a dog shall growl against any of the people of Israel, either man or beast. <coughs> That you may know that Yahweh makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. And all these your servants shall come down to me and bow down to me, saying, Get out to you and all the people who follow you. And after that I will go out, and he will and he went out from Pharaoh in hot anger. And then Yahweh said to Moses, Pharaoh will not listen to you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh, and Yahweh hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the people of Israel go out of his land. Yahweh said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month every man shall take a lamb according to their father's house, a lamb for a household, and if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons, according to what each can eat. You shall make your account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old, and you may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the fourteen days of this month. When the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the tor put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Do not eat any of the raw or boiled water, but roasted, its head with its legs and its inner parts. You shall let none of it remain until morning. Anything that remains until morning, you shall burn. It is. In this manner you shall eat it. With your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, you shall eat it in haste. It is Yahweh's Passover. For I'll pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I'll strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt I'll execute you judgments. I am Yahweh. The blood shall be a sign for you. On the houses where you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I'll pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to Yahweh. Throughout all your generations, as a statute forever, you shall keep it as a feast. Seven days you shall, e shall eat uneven, unleavened bread. On the first day you shall remove leavening out of your houses. For if anyone eats what is leavened, from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. On the first day you shall hold a holy assembly, and on the seventh day a holy assembly. No work shall be done on those days, but what everyone needs to eat. That alone may be prepared to you, and you shall observe the Feast of Unleavened Bread, for on this very day I brought you your hosts out of the land of Egypt. Therefore you shall observe this day throughout your generations as a statute forever. In the first month, 
from the fourteenth day of the month at evening. You shall eat unleavened bread until the twenty-fifth day until the twenty-first day of the month at evening. For seven days no leaven is to be found in your houses. If anyone eats what is leaven, that person will be cut off the congregation of Israel, whether he is a sojourner or a native to the land. You shall eat nothing leavened in your dwelling places. You shall eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go and select lamps. Oh, lambs. Oops. For yourselves according to your clans and kill the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of the hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin. And touch the lentil and the, tor the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. None of you shall go out of the... the of the door of this of his house until morning, for Yahweh will pass through and strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, Yahweh will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your house to strike you. You shall observe this right as a statute for you and your sons forever. And when you come to the land that Yahweh will give you as he has promised, you shall keep this service. And when your children say to you, "What?" Do you mean by the service you shall say it is the sacrifice of Yahweh's Passover for he passed over the houses of the people of Israel in Egypt and when he struck the Egyptians but spread our but spared our houses and the people bowed their heads in worship then the people of Israel went and did so as Yahweh had commanded Moses and Aaron so they did at midnight Yahweh struck down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon. And all the firstborn of the livestock and Pharaoh rose up in the night and he and all his servants and all of the Egyptian and there was a great cry in Egypt for there was not a house where someone was not dead. Then he summoned Moses and Aaron by night and said up go out from among my people both you and the people of Israel go serve Yahweh as you have said take your flocks and your herds as you have said, and be gone, and bless me also. The Egyptians were urgent with the people to send them out of the land in haste, for they said, We shall all be dead. So the people took their dough before it was leaving, their kneading bowls, and bound up their cloaks on their shoulders. The people of Israel had also done as Moses told them, for they had asked the Egyptians for silver and gold, jewelry, and for clothing. And Yahweh had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. So they let them have what they asked. Thus they plundered the Egyptians. And the people of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Sukkot. About 700, about 600,000 men on foot. Besides women and children, a multitude, a multitude also went up with them. And very much livestock, both flocks and herds, and they baked and leaving cakes and dough that they had brought out of Egypt. For it was not leaving because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not wait, nor had they prepared any provisions for themselves. The time that the people of Israel lived in Egypt was 430 years. At the end of 430 years, on that very day, all the hosts of Yahweh went out from the land of Egypt. It was a night of watching by Yahweh. To bring them out of the land of Egypt, so this same night it was is a night of watching kept by Yahweh by all the people of Israel throughout their generations. And Yahweh said to Moses and Aaron, This is the statute of the Passover. No foreigner shall eat of it, but every slave those that is brought, bought for money may eat of it after you have circumcised him. No foreigner or hired worker may eat of it. It shall be eaten in one, of the, in one house. You shall not take any of the flesh outside the house, and you sh shall not break any of its bones. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. If a stranger shall sojourn with you and keep and would keep the Passover to Yahweh, let all his males be circumcised. Then he may come near it and keep it. He shall be as a native of the land, but no uncircumcised person shall eat of it. There is, shall be one law for the native and for the stranger who sojourns among you. All the people of Israel did just as Yahweh commanded Moses and Aaron. And on that very day, Yahweh brought the people out of Egypt, out of the land of Egypt by their hosts. Yahweh said to Moses, Consecrate me. Consecrate to me all the firstborn. Whatever is the first to open the womb among the people of Israel, both men and of beast, is mine.
Then Moses said to the people, Remember this day in which you come out of the e yeah, come out from Egypt, out of the house of slavery, for by a strong hand Yahweh brought you out from this place. No leaven bread shall be eaten. Today, in the month of Abib, you are going out. And when Yahweh brings you to the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, which he swore to your fathers to give you, a land flowing with milk and honey, you shall keep this service in this month. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day you shall... There shall be a feast to Yahweh. Unleavened bread shall be eaten for seven days. No leavened bread shall be seen with you, and no leavening leaven shall be seen with you in all your territory. You shall tell your son on that day, it is because of Yahweh did <coughs> what Yahweh did for me when I came out of Egypt, and it shall be a to you as a sign on your hand and as a memorial between your eyes that the law of Yahweh may be in your mouth. For with a strong hand Yahweh has brought you out of Egypt, you shall therefore keep his statute at its appointed time from year to year. When Yahweh brings you into the land of the Canaanites, as he has swore to you and to your fathers, you shall he, and shall give it to you. You shall set apart Yahweh all the first ovens of the womb. Wait, no, I mistyped. All the first opens, all that first opens the womb. All right, that's right. All the firstborn of your animals that are males shall be Yahweh's. Every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb. Or if you will not redeem. It, you shall break its neck. Every firstborn of man among you, your son, shall be redeemed. And when it, and when in time to come, your son asks you, What does this mean? You shall say to him, By strong hand, Yahweh brought us out of Egypt from the house of slavery. For when Pharaoh suddenly refused to let us go, Yahweh killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of animals. Therefore I sacrifice to Yahweh all the males that first opened the womb. But all the firstborn of my sons I, I redeem. It shall be as a mark on your hand or the frontlets between your eyes. For by a strong hand Yahweh brought us out of Egypt. <coughs> Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, you king of the universe. He gives the Torah of truth, the everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah. Brukata Adonai Elohim, you malakalom. Asher Nata Lunu Dureti Met Baishie Lom Nata Betagin Yu Brokata Donai Latina Dara Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I'm going to say our blessing. Blessed art thou, Adonai Eloheinu, King Universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to grow ourselves with the words of Torah. Please Adonai Eloheinu, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai Eloheinu, King Universe. Who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Bless you, Adonai, give her the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to enlighten you, may be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's read is Jeremiah 46, 13 through 28. The word that Yahweh spoke to Jeremiah the prophet about the coming of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, to strike the land of Egypt. Declare in Egypt and proclaim in Mignol. Proclaim in Memphis and Taphanus. Say, stand ready and be prepared, for the sword shall devour you. Why are your mighty ones face down? They do not stand, because Yahweh thrust them down. He made them stumble and they fell. And they said to one another, Arise, and let us go back to our own people, into the land of our birth. Because the sword of the oppressor came the name of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, noisy one, who lets the hour go by. As I live, declares the king, whose name is Yahweh of hosts, like Tabor, among the mountains, and like Carmel, by the sea, 
shall one come. Prepare yourselves baggage for exile, O inhabitants of Egypt. For Memphis shall become a waste, a ruin without an inhabitant. A beautiful heifer is Egypt, but a biting fly from the north has come upon her. Even her hired, hired soldiers in her midst are like fattened calves. Yes, they have turned and fled together. They did not stand. For the day of their calamity has come upon them, the time of their punishment. She makes a sound like a serpent gliding away, and her enemies march in force and come against her with axes, like those who fell trees. They shall cut down her forest, declares Yahweh. Though it is impen impenetrable, because they are more numerous than locusts, they are without number. The daughter of Egypt shall be put to shame. She shall be delivered in the hand of a people from the north. Yah of hosts, Elohim of Israel, said, Behold, I am bringing punishment upon Aaron of Thebes, and Pharaoh in Egypt, and her gods, and her kings, upon Pharaoh, and those who trust in him. I'll deliver them into the hand of those who seek their life, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and his officers. Afterward, Egypt shall be inhabited as inhabited as in the days of old, declares Yahweh. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, nor be dismayed, O Israel, for behold, I will save you from far away, and your offspring from the land of their captivity. Jacob shall return and have quiet and ease, and none shall make him afraid. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, declares Yahweh, for I am with you. I will make full in. I will make a full end of all nations to which I have driven you. But of you I will not make a full end. I will discipline you in just measure, and I will by no means leave you unpunished. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elaine, your king universe, who gives the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver the Torah, Bukita Adonai Elaine, you malakalom. Asertalinu, Tredimet, Baishi Elom, Nata, Betakin, you, Bukita Adonai, Natina Torah. Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I'm going to say our blessings. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, you King Universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elohim, you're sweet in the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people. Israel, may we in our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Bless you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed you, Adonai Elohim, you King Universe, who has who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Bless you, Adonai, give her the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to enlighten you. May be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Yeah. Our first read is Mark 3, 7 through 19. Yeshua withdrew with his disciples to the sea and a great crowd followed from Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and Edomia. And from beyond the Jordan, and from around Tyre and Sidon, when the great great crowd heard all that he was doing, they came to him, and he told his disciples to have a boat ready for him, because the crowd, lest they crush him. For he had healed many, so that all who had disease pressed around him to touch him. And whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, "You are the Son of Elohim!" And he strictly ordered them not to make him known. And he went up on the mountain, and he called to him those whom he desired. And they came to him, and he appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, so that they might be with him, and he might send them out to preach. And have authority to cast out demons, he appointed the twelve, Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Bornich, Bornages, that is, son of thunder, Andrew and Philip, Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and James and the son of Alf, James, the son of Alphaeus. 
and Thaddeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. All right. Luke 2, 22 to 24. And when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to Yahuwah. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. John 19, 31-37, since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for Sabbath was a high day. The Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken, and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and of the other that who had been crucified with him. When they came to Yeshua, they saw that he was already dead. They did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. And he saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you may also that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled, not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another scripture says they will look on him whom they have pierced. Alright. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, Ki, or Adonai Elohinu, King of the Universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, O Lord, or Adonai, giver of the Torah, Brukata Adonai Elohinu, Malak Alom, Asanata Lenutri, Met, Baishi Alom, Natabatikinu, Brukata Adonai, Natina Torah. Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before I get started, I must say your blessings. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, King Universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elohim, sweeten the words of your Torah in their mouths and in the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and through your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you. Adonai Elohim, King of the Universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to enlighten you and be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. This read is 1 Corinthians. Can, can you go up a little? 1 Corinthians 11, 20 through 34. When you come together, it is not the Lord's supper that you eat. For in eating, each one goes ahead with his own meal. One goes hungry, another gets drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of Elohim and humiliate those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Then I command you in this. No, I will not. For I received from the Lord what I delivered to you. That the Lord Yeshua on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he gave thanks, he broke it, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same we also <coughs> in the same way, also he took a cup after supper, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread of eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unwanted manner unworthy manner oops, will be guilty concerning the blood and body of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are dis disciplined, so that we may be, so that we may not be condemned along with the world. 
So then, my brothers, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, so that when you come together, it will not be for judgment. About the other things, I'll give directions when I come. <coughs> Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, you king of the universe, who gives the, the Torah of truth instead of everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah, Brukata Adonai Elohim, you Malak Alom. Esenata Lenu Tereti Medvaishi Elom Natapa Bete can you, Brukata Adonai Latina Torah. Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before I get started, I must say our blessings. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, you King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to regross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elohim, you sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we, and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Blessed you, Adonai Elohim, you king of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to enlighten you, may be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's read is Revelations 8, 6 through 9, 12. Now the seven angels who were who had the seven trumpets prepared to blow them. The first angel blew his trumpet, and there followed hail and fire mixed with blood, and there was thrown upon the earth. And a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the grass was burned up. The second angel blew his trumpet, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood, and a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. The third angel blew his trumpet, and a great star fell from heaven blazing like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the, the springs of water. The name of this star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became Wormwood, and many people died from the water because it had been made bitter. The fourth angel blew his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that the third of their light might be darkened, and a third of day might be kept from shining, and likewise a third of the night. Then I looked, and I heard an eagle crying with a loud voice as it flew directly overhead, Woe, woe, woe to those who dwell on the earth. At the blast of the other trumpets, the three angels are about to blow. And the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to earth, and he was given a key to the shaft of the bottomless pit. He opened the shaft of the bottomless pit, and from the shaft arose, rose smoke, like smoke of a great furnace, and a star in the air were darkened with the smoke from the shaft, and from the smoke came locusts on the earth, and they were given power like the power of scorpions of the earth, and they were told not to harm the grass of the earth, or any of the green plants or trees, but only those people who did not have the seal of Elohim on their foreheads. They were allowed to torment them for five months, but not to kill them. And their torment was like a torment of a scorpion when it stings somebody. And in those days people will seek death and will not find it. They will long to die, but death will flee from them. In appearance, the locusts were like horses prepared for battle, and on their backs were what looked like crowns of gold. Their faces were like human faces, their hair like women's hair, and their teeth like lion's teeth. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the noise of their wings was like <clears throat> the noise of many chariots with horses rushing in the battle. They have tails and stings like scorpions. And their power to hurt people for for five months is in their tails. They have a king over them. The angel of the bottomless pit, his name is Hebrew, is Abaddon. And in Greek, he is called Apollyon. The first woe has passed. Behold, two woes are still to come. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, you king of the universe, who gives the Torah of truth and everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah, Bruka ta Adonai Elohim, you Malak alone. Asher Natalinu Tredi Met Vaishi Elom Natapaket Betakinu, Bruka ta Adonai Natina Torah.
Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before I get started, I'm going to say our blessings. Blessed art thou, Adonai Eloheinu, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, and commanded us to gross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Eloheinu, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths, and in the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we and your offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai Eloheinu, King of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to enlighten you. May be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's read is Revelation 16, 1 through 21. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple telling the seven angels, Go and pour out on the earth the seven bowls of wrath of Elohim. So the first angel went and poured out his bowl on the earth, and harmful and painful sores came upon the people who bore the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The second angel poured out his bowl into the sea, and it became like blood of a corpse, and every living thing died that was in the sea. The third angel poured out his bowl into the rivers and springs, and they became blood. And I heard the angel in charge of water say, Just are you, O Holy One, who is and was. For you have brought these judgments, for they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink. It is what they deserve. And I heard the altar saying, Yes, Lord Elohim, the Almighty, just and true are your judgments. The fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and it was allowed to scorch people with fire. They were scorched by fire, by fierce heat, and they cursed the name of Elohim, who had power over these plagues. They did not repent and give him glory. The fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom was plunged in the darkness. People gnawed their to tongues in anguish, and cursed Elohim of heaven for their pain and sores. They did not repent of their deeds. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up. To prepare for a way for kings from east. And I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, three unclean spirits like frogs, for they are demonic spirits, performing signs, who go abroad to the kingdoms of the whole world to assemble them for battle on the great day of Elohim the Almighty. Behold, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake, keeping his garments on, that he may not go about naked or be seen exposed. And they assemble them at a place that is in he that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came from the temple saying, from the throne saying, It is done. And there were flashes of lightning and rumblings, pearls of thunder, and a great earthquake, such as there had never been seen since man was on the earth. So great was the earthquake. The great cities was split into three parts. The city of the nations fell, and Elohim remembered Babylon the great to make her drain the cup of wine of the fury of his wrath. And every island fled away, and there was no mountains to be found. And great hailstones, and about 100 pounds each, fell from heaven on people. And they crushed, they cursed <laughs> Elohim for the plague of the hail, because plague was so severe. Blessed art thou, Adonai Eloheinu, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah, Brukata Adonai Eloheinu, Malach Alom, Asher Natal Anu, Teredi Met, Baishiei Alom, Natal Betekinu, Brukata Adonai Natinatara.